This came good on that board. Yuck. Good luck me. Check the views. No, good luck me. So here we are at the Viking Club. Uh, first time in Steubenville and it's a pretty cool room. We are on the third or fourth level. We've got Brian over here, the owner, um, have had a couple really good hands. Just gonna play my A game, so we'll see how many hands we get in. Be back in a bit. Now, if you haven't played at a private poker club yet, I highly recommend you check one out, like this one in Steubenville, Ohio, called the Viking Social Club. These are poker rooms where you'll find unadulterated poker being played every single day. And I'm not talking about those seedy underground games like we see in the movies either. Rather, these are legitimate games being played outside casinos and not in your Aunt Betsy's basement. Just take a look at this hand. I'm in the cutoff when I look down at Ace King offsuit and decide to, that a raise is in order and end up with mm, one, two, three, four, five callers. <laughs> well, that's kind of typical in early stages of the tournament. So we go five ways to a flop of nine, five, seven, couple of diamonds. The small blind, big blind, and under the gun all check to me, so I make out a C bet and only the button calls. Now, this guy's been eyeballing my chips since I sat down, and since he acted so quickly, my spidey senses are telling me that hmm, he's either got a diamond draw or maybe some weird baby straight doo 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 doo. <laughs> either way, me thinks I'm gonna need some help here. The turn comes, it's my bailout, and since I'm first to act, I gonna continue with my story even though I'm pretty sure I'm good here. So I lead out for 10k leaving roughly 15,000 behind. And with the pot now over 25k in level 2, I'm pretty sure that I'm either gonna be tossing in my green chip bounty along with another $100 rebuy or <laughs> I'm gonna get a double up. Anybody call the button thinks for a bit and smooth calls the 10k but he looks a little bit nervous like maybe he only has a bluff catcher. We'll see. The river, well, it's sort of okay for me. It's the king of diamonds. And even though that front door straight got there, I don't get a sense that our button villain really liked this card at all. He starts shaking his head a bit, but I have to wonder, you think this might be a reverse tell? We interrupt our regularly scheduled hand analysis to bring you some insights about poker. According to our friends at Pokerist.com, a reverse tell, or false tell, is one of the trickiest tools in a poker player's arsenal. Now, in case you're not familiar, a tell is present whenever a change of behavior signifies how a player feels about the cards he or she's been dealt, and a reverse tell is a calculated mistruth that's been exhibited in order to throw off an opponent from his reading ability. For beginners, this weapon is often overused and easily misinterpreted. But for those lucky few, a reverse tell can bring in riches beyond imagination. And Scotty's got all the chips, except maybe for whole about 600,000 maybe at this point that Kevin's, Kevin's holding. And Kevin makes it 100,000 to go. Kevin overplayed that. I don't have any idea. Oh, this is a very interesting hand here. You call going to be all over, baby. I call. I play the board. Kevin calls. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's got a nine. Scotty's got a new world champion. Wow, what a hand here. So, the next time you want to bluff, Try leaning into the table instead of away from it. Sounds simple enough, but it just might fool your opponents into thinking that you have the nuts, or not. Now back to our regularly scheduled hand analysis already in progress. Come on, Regardless, I shove all in for my remaining stack. And the good news comes in the form of some bear-like growl from our villain. And while the table makes room for their takeout, our villain makes that hero call. <laughs> He had ace eight off suit, and we get to scoop in the pot. Oh, so that was kind of brutal. Um, we are on our first break. Uh, there's a twenty dollar add on for twenty five uh, twenty five thousand additional chips. Um, got a, on a bit of a heater. Um, had pocket aces, flopped a set, and the same villain who had um, been after me before that caused my first rebuy. Um, he just kept leading into me, so okie dokie, let him go. Um, we'll have that right over here. Um, a lot of fun at this club. Um, we're in downtown Steubenville, Ohio. So uh, that's it, baby. Um, We've got about four minutes left on break. A beautiful night here in downtown Steubenville. We'll catch you up in a little bit. Then as we take a look at another hand here, I'm under the gun looking down at another raggedy Jack 3 offsuit, so I quickly fold. Our hijack decides to limp in for 800 when the cutoff, he makes a substantial raise to 5,400. Big signal to the entire table that he has a monster. 
And from how he's played it so far, this could mean anything from ace-king suited all the way up to pocket aces. Now, a club favorite, Kelly, he takes a look at his holdings and likes what he sees, so he decides to gamble it up and put all his chips in the middle for less. And because this is a bounty tournament, the button decided his hand was worth the risk, so he calls the 54. Now, this is either good news to our button villain, because if this guy had an incredibly strong hand, I suspect he would have put all his chips into work in order to isolate. Eh, we'll find out soon enough. To that end, everyone folds, and we go three ways to a flop and a $400 side pot of king, five, five, two spades. Now, the hijack, he must have a pretty decent hand here. He leads out for 10K, but the button, he goes over the top for 17.5, which forces the hijack to call the additional 7,500. And when the hands were tabled, we see that our villain in the hijack, he had pocket jacks. Kelly in the cutoff, king, queen of hearts, and the button, well, you guessed it, it was six ten of spades for the flopped flush draw. The turn, ugh, so cruel to Kelly. It's the nine of spades, giving the front door flush to the button. But don't count those chips and bounties quite yet. He's still got to dodge that old river rat. So let's see what we can do to help our friend Kelly find some run good. On the count of three, I need you to hit that like and subscribe button so we can have our river rat nominee, which means Kelly will have that win. Are you ready? One, two, three. The river shows up as an unexpected king of diamonds, all because of your support. So thank you for liking this show, and Kelly thanks you too for his triple up with his rivered full house. I mean, it is. You get to be the river rat for this oh, episode. The You're the river rat. Blinds are at 800, 400, 800, and I'm first to act when I look down at ace nine offsuit. And since we're down down to six players and the club's only paying out four, the strength of this hand has popped up a bit. So I bring in for a min click and only the big blind calls. We're now heads up to a flop of ace nine seven rainbow. The big blind had already checked in the dark, so it's next to impossible to know exactly where he's at. I lead out for 25K with my top two pair and the big blind smooth calls. The turn comes another spade, and I know there might be a few haters out there yelling at me because, yeah, this card does bring in a backdoor spade draw. I was just trusting in my two pair to be good here. So we both go check, check. Yeah, well, that move was a bust because the river completed that backdoor flush with a sneaky 10 of spades, which, as the story goes, the big blind now decides to lead out for a half pot size bet of 45K. Man, in these spots when someone's line doesn't make any sense, I like to rely on my experience as a Gen Xer and harness the theatrical wisdom from what is widely accepted as the greatest movie of all time. They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. <laughs> Holy shit! Now, Doc Brown has no idea how the Libyans found him after he stole bomb parts from him, but it doesn't matter anyway. This is a movie which my high school celebrity crush, Michael J. Fox, he moved away from being the nerdy finance wannabe named Alex D. Keaton to the cool and elusive Marty McFly who travels back in time to get his parents to kiss at their high school prom. Yeah, well, look, Marvin, Marvin, you gotta play. See, that's where they kiss for the first time on the dance floor, and if there's no music, they can't dance. If they can't dance, they can't kiss. If they can't kiss, they can't fall in love, and I'm history. Hey, man, the dance is over, unless uh, you know somebody else that can play the guitar. And in context of this tournament, I have absolutely no idea idea how this guy could possibly be bluffing, but it doesn't matter anyway because most players don't typically find River Bluffs, though it is possible here because he said earlier he wanted to become famous on our vlog. But I do think my read here is spot on as this player most likely is not bluffing. And I make the discipline fold. Trying to entice our villain, he looked at me and said, hey, I'll tell you later. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back to some focused hand analysis, shall we? Because I'm feeling a bit frisky in early position. Decide to limp in with 10 six of diamonds. The hijack? I guess he has belief in Daniel Negreanu's limp and his pimpin', as does the button. Small blind completes, and the big blind checks his option. We now go five ways to a flop of king, deuce, eight, two diamonds. Checks go all around the table, to which I get my money card on the turn. It's the ace of diamonds. This time, our small blind decides to lead out for 11,000, as I think he might be watching some of our videos on our channel. Uh, he hasn't 
taken his eyes off his phone yet. And that's a cool thing to do, you know? Oh, wait a minute. He didn't subscribe. Ugh. All right, then. I guess I gotta show him. I raised a 25K with my lucky flush. Ha. The other two fellas, they must have already been subscribed because they seem to know what's coming and toss their cards quickly into the middle, but not our villain. Oh, no way, man. He glances at the board, then counts out his stack, and then reveals to what I now believe is his version of ICM to mean I concede to you, Marty. <laughs> May as well take it all. Shoves his remaining stack of 63K into the middle, and, you know, it took me less time to call than if I were Tommy Two-Tone trying to dial Jenny. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. <laughs> and when the hands are tabled, our villain is holding ace, king, off suit for top, top. He gets up, turns around, walks out the door, and I scoop in another $25 bounty. That'll do it for this week's episode. And coming up, we make our way back to Toledo for the Salute to Service Tournament, live at the Reserve. So come on back and find out who our next river rat will be. Who knows? It might just be you. And since you made it this far, hit that like and subscribe button. It's free, and it lets me know that you want even more poker shenanigans just like what we have over here. As always, play smart, play with hard, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.